Okay, let's take a look at uh, exercise two in this uh, exam in statistics, VB SDA five from 2018. So let's first find the, the exercise. The exercise is about questionnaires. And we are told that uh, participants in a course on diabetes have answered a questionnaire about their understanding of diabetes. Each participant have graded their understanding of diabetes prior to and after the course. Each time the understanding was graded on a scale from zero, absolutely no knowledge, to 10 comprehensive understanding of the condition. In total, um, were 50 participants in the questionnaire and the summary statistics of the answers are given below. And now we are, we are asked to examine the, the change in self-evaluated understanding of diabetes based on, on these numbers. And to do that, we should conduct a t-test to determine whether there is a significant change at the 1% level. And we should also sketch the required calculations for that. So, um, yeah, let's draw a bit and, and see what we can uh, figure out uh, here. So, um, if we go over here, we ha have a, a t-test. And the idea with the t-test is to look at the difference that can we denote by this uh, triangle or delta and compare that to some kind of variation uh, or our standard deviation uh, here and given these two and uh, our number of uh, observations we can say something about whether the difference we see could occur by a chance or uh, it's um, it's not uh, just a chance observation to, to see so. So what are we actually told in the exercise? Um, if we look at the, the prior, we had a 4.5 and 2, so 4.5 plus or minus 2.0. We have the posterior, which was a bit higher, 6.3 plus or minus 1.9. And we also get some value on the difference. That was 1.5. Well, there seems to be a error in the exercise. What was it? It should be, I think it should be a five up here. So the difference will be uh, 0 0.8 plus or minus and 0 0.9 here. Okay. Um, depending on how this study was set up, uh, we can approach this in, in different ways. Let's first of all try to, to draw how this uh, looks like. If we have our number line or a line where we put our answers, we have uh, our prior um, to the course uh, evaluations. Uh, are centered around 5.5 and they have a, a deviation of pl plus or minus 2 which means that um, there will be approximately 2.0 here and 2.0 uh, here. So this gives us some kind of width of, of the bell. Similarly if we look at the uh, fantastic color here uh, at the posterior, we can um, go a bit up. It will be centered around here, uh, 
and it will be nearly as, as wide here. Oh. A bit difficult to draw this. And the width here would be 1.9 or so, similar over here. And now the question is, is this difference um, different from zero or could they origin from, from the same population? And um, if we just knew that some were measured prior um, to a course and some different were measured afterwards, but we didn't know who was who, um, we need to, to compare these two distributions and they have a significant overlap. Um, so that would be a, a non paired uh, t test. And if we don't know how things are paired up, we have to do something like this. But in this case, um, yeah, let's just take this color. We are told something different. We are getting the, the difference that they, they were 0 0.8 uh, with a standard deviation that was much smaller than this one here. And if we can use a paired t-test, the uncertainty in the changes are much smaller than if we just have um, added or subtracted these two from each other. So to try to draw this, we can state around here at 0 0.8. Um, we have the maximum and then curve will uh, fall up off and approximately 0 0.9 out here. Um, the, the curve has fallen down to approximately one third of its initial value. So far so good. But what is interesting here is that this curve has fallen down to this level um, at almost uh, zero. So this mean might be significantly different from zero, which is definitely not the, the case over here where these two curves are, are not different. So let's see if we can, can do this in, in a proper uh, way. And the statistics uh, we want to compute for the t-test is the t-value which is given by the difference divided by the standard deviation of it multiplied with the square root of the number of observations. So in this ca case, we have 0 0.8. Um, divided by, do, 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 something seems wrong. I bet that change, I think it should be divided by, yeah, um, 0.9 divided by the square root of 50. That was our number of observations. And to get a, a value of this, I'll just find a calculator in a moment, but we could just uh, rearrange it. So we have a 0 0.8 times the square root of 50 is close to the square root of, um, 49, so 7, and instead of dividing in the denominator, we can multiply with that in in the um, denominator, and we have 0 0.9 here. So this value should be uh, quite close to yeah, 0 0.8 or, or so, no, quite close to be around. 0 0.56 divided by 0. Point. Then that's around 6. This value we can look up in a data table or with the PT function in, uh, in R and we can get a, a sense of uh, how likely it is to, to see an observation this extreme um, if um, the, the actual distribution were on, on uh, zero or centered around uh, zero. So the curve we will get out is this uh, t distribution here. 
center around zero. And then the PT function to some value x here will give us a, the area below the curve to the left of x. What we're actually interested in is get this uh, region over here. So to get this area, we know that the area below the entire curve is 1. So we say 1 minus pt. This gives us uh, uh, this uh, area over here. And actually, we also want to uh, add the area uh, to the left of the center, um, or x units to the x of the center, like here. So actually, we uh, multiply all of this by 2, so we end up by having 2 times 1 minus pt of 6, which gives us some value that is uh, related to the probability of seeing something as extreme as, as this. And, uh, oh yeah, we might need to specify that the degrees of freedom for this is uh, 49. So let's try to do this in, uh, in R and see what uh, comes out of it. So I'll just start our studio. We are um, continuing on the uh, solution for the first uh, part of the exercise. And I'm just writing a, a few headers here on the exercise about the diabetes and the t-test. And what we will do here is to actually make the calculation so we have the difference. Save that into a variable that was 0 0.8. We have the variance 0 0.9. And we have the then number of observations that was 50. And then we can calculate our t value by stating our difference, and dividing that by the variance divided by the square root of n number of observations minus 1, right, like this. And when we can just uh, show the, the t value here. Ah, I need to do it like this. Okay, so instead of 6, it should actually be 6.22. And now we can uh, continue by looking up this, uh, or figuring out the, the area below the curve by stating this 2 times 1 minus pt of the t value. And the degrees of freedom should be be this number of observations minus 1. And what we get here is a quite low uh, p-value. Um, like here, which states that it's not a coincidence that the um, the difference has changed as, as it is. So uh, I'll write a, a few lines here about what we assume is the case. Uh, we assume that the data comes from a paired uh, um, from yeah from paired values pre and post um, and the uh, t value is computed as follows and the the calculations are outlined here. It should be quite easy to follow what actually happens um, based on the difference um, standard deviation and number of 
Observations. I'll just change the variable name here so it's a bit clear what actually happens. Doesn't change anything on, on the outcome. Um, and what have we here? Then the p value is uh, determined by looking at the area below the um, t this tree. Distribution with uh, 49 degrees of freedom um, outside the range specified by the T value. P value is much lower than uh, 0 0.01, the 1% significance. Uh, level uh, stated in the uh, question. Therefore, the um, difference is actually prior for doing all of this, uh, we need to uh, specify our null hypothesis. Um, and our null hypothesis is that the difference is um, has a mean value of uh, zero. And what we're actually doing here is comparing our observations with the statement and figuring out how likely is it this to be true, given our observations. And what we find is a p-value here, which is uh, very low. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah. And as this p-value, the probability of seeing this by chance is much lower than the level we want to look at it at. Uh, we see that uh, the difference is uh, significant. Good. Let's see how this looks in the final document. I'll just uh, so knit to a PDF, and we can see what uh, comes out here. Um, and it seems like something failed here. Let me check out what that was about. Okay, it has created the document. I just need to find it. Find in document. There it is. So here we have this question about diabetes, and we can see our calculations here. We can see the t value that has been uh, found. And um, we continue our calculations and we finally state that the difference is significant. So here we have uh, answered that part of the, the question. I hope you got something out of this uh, video. Bye.